What's going on guys? We're here today to talk about the important topic of egg binding in females. Although egg binding can be kind of rare, it is something that does happen. So when it does happen, you do want to be ready and know what to expect and if there's anything that you could do to help out your little gecko. So if that sounds interesting to you, then check out this intro and stick around for the video. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. So egg binding in female leopard geckos is a sad part of the hobby, but it is something that does happen when you're breeding. So here we have a very nice, very beautiful red stripe inferno tangerine female. This is her first year breeding. She was up to weight this year. You can see she has a very nice tail. She's retaining a lot of nutrients and has no problem whatsoever with that. However, you can see a bulbous effect to her body and it's difficult to see, but if you were here in person, you could see one giant lump of what would be a white egg in her stomach. Sometimes what happens is that if the female has been egg bound for two to three months, her body will start to soften those eggs. And I've even seen the body combine those eggs into one giant blob and then the gecko pass that blob. So what is an egg bound female? An egg bound female is basically a female where the eggs are stuck in her reproductive tract and she's having a very difficult time passing them. Some people have had success and believe that if you give the gecko a lukewarm shoulder high or belly high bath, maybe 15 minutes every day or every other day that that will help. I've tried that personally with a few girls and that has never worked for me, but I have heard that that has worked for some people. So if you want to be proactive with your gecko, that is one thing you can do. What I like to do is leave the girl alone. Make sure she has fresh water once or twice a week. Make sure she has a little bit of fresh food because you'll start to see her tail getting skinnier, most likely because she's stressed out and she's gonna stop eating. And make sure she has good supplementation and vitamins inside of her food bowl. One last thing, make sure her humid hide is moist so that she feels confident and comfortable that she has a place to lay. But sometimes guys, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do. There is birthing troubles in all kinds of female animals in this world, including humans. Humans go through birthing troubles, monkeys go through birthing troubles, I'm sure dolphins do, and leopard geckos are no exception. There is always birthing problems in this world because we live in an imperfect world. So just being aware that this can happen to you and some of the things that you can do will at least make you more prepared for the situation. Situation. Let's say goodbye to this little one here and I'm gonna pull out a girl that is in worse condition than she is. She's pretty bad. I mean, you can see she's pretty bloated, pretty blown up there. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do for her, but we do have a girl that I would consider to be in a worse situation than she is. Okay, now this is another tangerine raptor female. This female, you can see a little bit of a different shape too. You can see she has a very bulbous body, but her tail is starting to get skinnier. And if you were to look closely at her back right here, you can see the ridge of her spine. Don't be fooled by the bloatiness of their belly. When a leopard gecko is egg bound, she is most likely not going to eat or she's not going to eat well. And so the longer that the time carries on of her being egg bound, the more that her body is going to lose nutrients because she's not eating. This gecko has been egg bound longer than the last gecko that I showed. If I had to guess, the last gecko has probably been egg bound for a month and a half, maybe two months tops. And this girl is probably pushing more like two and a half to three months of being egg bound. The longest that I have ever seen an egg bound female go is five months. I don't have the girl anymore. We wound up selling her to somebody as a pet gecko, but she was the one that I talked about earlier in this video. She was egg bound for so long, somehow her two eggs became one giant soft blob in her body and she passed that. There's a couple different things that can happen with egg bound girls. If they're in the early stages of egg bound, like at a month, month and a half old, I have seen girls 
somehow soften up those eggs and pass them out. Or one day you will just notice that those eggs are no longer there. They seem to reabsorb them right into their body. I have to look more into the biology of that, how that's possible. But at least from my experiences, it is what seems to happen a lot of the time. But sometimes the eggs will not pass, not get reabsorbed. And unfortunately, you're gonna be left with a gecko that is completely stuck with eggs inside of her. You can take her to the vet, but as small as these geckos are, any surgery is gonna be extremely risky, extremely expensive, and extremely unpredictable. So that's why I say just leave them alone, let them have their space. The three things that I make sure that I tell people, make sure the humid hide is moist, make sure the food bowl is full with supplementation and vitamins, and food of course, and make sure that they have fresh water two times a week would be best, one times a week is okay. And if you really, really wanna go the next level, you can do the warm bath thing, but again, that doesn't work every time. And I personally have never seen it work for me. If the gecko cannot pass that egg, what is most likely gonna happen is that eventually she's gonna rupture something in her stomach or she's gonna get an infection from all the stress that it's putting on her organs and stretching things out. And we have had certain geckos die from this situation. Just thinking off of the top of my head, I can remember two geckos that died this year from being egg bound. One was a Turkmenicus girl, one was an Afghanicus girl, and it was very sad to see that happen. I also recently had a tangerine female girl pass away, which was very surprising because she was on track with laying her eggs. She was maybe only egg bound for a month, which is not very long at all. Sometimes girls stay egg bound for four to five months, like I mentioned. So one month is nothing. And I opened up the tub one day for cleaning and she was passed away in there. I have no explanation for that. She was perfectly healthy tail, body structure, everything. Sometimes complications just happen, ruptures happen. I looked at her stomach and I took pictures. I'll put them up on screen here if I can find those pictures. And it looks like there was hemorrhaging or a lot of pressure going on in her stomach and that caused for a rupture, possible infection. I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know what went wrong. All I know is that something went wrong. So again, that ridgy spine is a sign that they are in not so good condition. The bloated belly. Let's see if her, we could see a little bit more. The lighting is terrible, so it's not going to show very, very good, but you will see a lot of red and white stress marks. Looking at her in person, it looks like the two eggs almost go all the way down into her chest cavity. It's really, really weird looking. Almost like the eggs just grow bigger and bigger and bigger. And imagine if there's babies in those eggs, right? Most of the time the eggs are no good when the gecko finally passes them. But I wouldn't say that it's impossible for babies to literally be incubating inside of her belly and then potentially trying to hatch. And maybe that happened to the geckos that died on me from being egg bound. I don't know. Egg bound in the best scenario, the females will reabsorb those eggs or pass them weeks or months later. In a worst case scenario, unfortunately, the gecko is not going to make it. Now, one other thing that is worth noting about females that are laying in general, even if they're not egg bound or egg bound girls, is you might start to see some weird poos. So if we zoom in on this poo right here, you can see that that is not a normal poo. It's kind of very like thick and yellow pasty. Sometimes you will see green coloration to the poo with females that are laying eggs. It's a weird thing that can happen. You know, like one clutch, they might go perfectly fine for a few clutches and then they start pooping a little weird before the next clutch. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't mean that your gecko automatically has parasites. Nine times out of 10, their poo will go back to normal within the next week or so. But I just wanted to show you that some weird stuff can happen when girls are going through egg bound trouble or when they're just breeding in general. You wanna be on film, Effie? So what did you guys think about this video? I got my cat, Effie, here. I wanna introduce her to you guys. Some of you guys already know her, but she's very sweet hearted, very nice kitty, very loving, and she always tags along with me in the gecko room. I have to be very careful with her in the gecko room because cats are cats, right? They're hunters, they're predators. They don't understand. So they don't understand 
that geckos are our friends. They just want to play with them, claw them, bite them if they can. I see her outside chasing lizards and killing lizards and stuff, so I don't trust her in here by herself. I watch her very closely, but she is an awesome companion of mine slash co-worker. She's purring right now, and she always keeps me company in here. She loves to sit right at the edge of the window right here and look out at the birds, especially if I have the window open, like it's very hot in here. I'll often have the window open while I'm doing work and stuff and she'll sit there and chirp at the birds back and all that kind of good stuff. So anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this video and if there's other topics that you want me to cover in leopard geckos. I really appreciate you guys being here and supporting us. We are going on past 4,000 subscribers now in just about a year and a half, maybe two years of shooting videos. And that is really, really awesome, guys. I wanna thank you so much. That excites me very much. And I look forward to the next 4,000 subscribers. So thank you guys very much. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, remember to have a geeky gecko great day. Peace.